Hi, right, this is Gary Campbell on 31 YouTubes and 31 Days. Artist recreates the world, and today I have Queen Moore with me. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Queen. Hey, everyone. My name is Queen Moore. I'm from Urban Queen Brand. I am a visual artist. I, I'm just universal. Uh, what else? That means many hats. <laughs> she does them well. Another talent to one. They just keep coming. Thanks. Tell us about that art therapy. You were just telling me about the art therapy. Yeah. And, and then we can build into other things. Okay. Well, I'm a recreational art therapist in Chatham, New Jersey. I work with a clientele of uh, dementia patients and Alzheimer patients using art as therapy. Uh, this is my third demographic. My first demographic uh, was autism, children with autism. So, you know, it's a great way to have art as therapy. Art is healing. Um, it's non evasive. It's pure. It's a, you know, a, a tangible modality that will take your mind off of the actual occurrence of what's getting you down. So I give thanks for that, for that practice. Yeah, it's powerful because we keep saying that it's the artist that recreates the world, but the healing powers of, of art. And so you talked about the various communities. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the term that you used? For, oh, the demographics. The demographics. So the population, how yeah. much more for the common folk, although all of us might not be considered common or normal, but what we're saying is that the artist is able to heal mm -hmm. through art. When did you know that you were artists? I mean, my grandmother was an artist. Uh, rest in peace, Grandma Ernestine. Um, and she passed that down to my father. My father owned a construction and catering company. Um, and with that, I worked on that in the summers, you know, scraping houses and learning how to plaster holes and, you know, cutting drywall. So, you know, my parents were you know, very strict on getting the job done. There was no excuses. So that's how I kind of had, you know, my my art. So you always had that hands-on yeah. kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So how does your art, I mean, you told us how you, you can you deal with different demographics of people, mm -hmm. but how does your art change the city oh. or change people in, in, in a broader scope? Because you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. I mean, I have artists tattooed on the back of my neck. Um, Turn that around. Oh, hold on. She's going to show us, y'all. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we see it. Okay. So, um, well, I see. You'll never know what's going to come up on this YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. So, I got that like maybe about seven years ago. And what actually became my dad said that he wasn't going to pay for me to go to school to be an artist. So, I became a psychology major. In college, I was a dance teacher. Um, I've danced since I was a child. Uh, he was just not hearing it, so I waited till my senior year, and I transferred and changed my major into an art therapy psychology major. Nice. And I started practicing um, shortly a, after I graduated. A, that's a move a woman would do. Very, <laughs> very smooth. That was smooth. I had to get my art in, you know. So, yeah. So look, here's here's a, here's one of your pieces. Yes. And the good thing about this. This is considered abstract art, right? Yeah, it's not even finished. I have so, a lot of work to do. So you can't tell if it's backwards or forwards. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. It's beautiful. And it's very uh, reminiscent of Robert and Sonia Delaunay, French couple that were very famous for uh, quilt making. His wife was famous for quilt making, and he mimicked her quilts through painting. So they were a very, they were like the Jay-Z and Beyonce of the art world. What's that name? Uh, Robert and Sonia Delaunay. Make sure y'all Google that. Yeah. I got that from Madison J. Google that. <laughs> put that on Twitter. Yeah. So, you know, the technique, it's, it's, it's about building aesthetic. And I, t I try to talk to a lot of children that we mentor and whatnot through my company that art is not about, rep it's not representational all the time. It's not categorized. It's not, you know, realistic all the time. You got to sometimes set yourself up outside of the box right. to think outside of the box. Right, right, right. So our work, you know, anyone can paint realistically, but does that really, you know, does it really fire the transmitters? Does it really get you thinking? That's a good point. That's you know? a good point. And that's, a, that's a, um, important for the artist to know, too, because we have artists that are very, at various points mm -hmm. and they are learning their craft, learning the technique, but then it's almost like an entertainer, musician. Mm -hmm. You can perform, but there's a difference between, between performing and really tapping into people's energy and, and, and touching them where they need to be touched mm -hmm. um, through the art. Mm -hmm.
How how long is that taking you to really learn to, to own build the brand? aesthetic behind it? Yes. I mean, it's taken me pretty much. I'm still building aesthetic to this very moment. This morning, I was painting in my home studio, and it's like you never can learn and build your aesthetic enough. It's always it's always evolving. Shout out to Evolving Jay. Um, it's a good plug. <laughs> So it's always evolving and it's something that it's, it's ever going. You have to completely work on it. It's like building you. You can't just stop at 35. I know that's right. It never stops. You know, you got to continue to build you, build your craft, build your aesthetic so that you have something that's different, that sets you apart from other people that are doing the same exact thing. It's like relationships. You ne it yeah. never stops. You always, yeah. and it's not really work because if it's passion and it's love, you just do it. It's worth it. Because it's part of life. Mm -hmm. It's part of connecting with humanity. Right. It, I guess it's being human. Right. Um.